If you are currently working in wrestling as a referee or you foresee this as a future career path for yourself, today's video is one you cannot afford to miss because I'm going over tips and tricks to help you make matches great. And it's all coming up next. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. If you are passionate about the craft of professional wrestling and you're never done learning all about it, then you have landed in the exact right place. What are you waiting for? Go ahead and join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe right now. At the top of today's video, I want to shout out my newest patrons. So a warm welcome to the likes of Caden, Aaron, Dylan, Philip, and Sean. And it could be you I'm shouting out in next week's video. Follow the link down below and join our community over on Patreon. If you want to support the work I'm doing here on Till We Make It, if you want to help me keep this a weekly YouTube channel, then I need your assistance to reach my goal of 100 patrons this year. In fact, today's topic was suggested by one of my awesome patrons. So this one's going out to you, Thomas. Thanks for the idea. Today's video is dedicated to you. Let's break open some tips and tricks for referees so they can help to make matches great. First and foremost, if at all possible, you want to listen to the match being constructed backstage and listen for story points. If you are well versed in the story that's being told, you're going to be able to help sell it to the audience. Here's an example. If the story of the match you are refereeing involves one wrestler's knee buckling after a leapfrog, followed by a heat that's on that knee, and culminating in the figure four leg lock as the finish, you will be able to find even subtle ways to keep putting focus on that injured knee. And helping to strengthen that element of storytelling does help to make the match great. Up next, even if you know what every single near fall is going to be, even if you know exactly what is intended as the finish, no matter what, you're going to treat the match as if it is a shoot, as if it is real. And this speaks to the concept of illusion of conflict. It is one of those great intangibles of professional wrestling, and when it isn't present, the matches have no tension. That can be supplied by you. Here's a prime example. It is not your job to kick out before the count of three. That's the wrestler's job. It's not your job to hold up your count if it seems as if a wrestler's not going to get their shoulders up in time. It is your job to fire in those counts consistently no matter what. And yes, that might mean that every one in 10,000 matches out there some distracted wrestler isn't going to pick their shoulders up off the mat and you're going to fire in that three count even though you know this was not the intended finish. But for that one in every 10,000 instance, the other 9,999 matches you officiate will be made even greater because you never sacrificed the illusion of conflict. Before I break open this next one, if you're learning something from today, if you're enjoying this video, take just one second, please, and one click of your finger and leave me a like a palooza down below. Up third on my list, you as the referee must become an expert on the rules. You have to know all the various counts. You have to start them promptly. You have to keep them consistent. One wrestler starts climbing up on the corner post or up the ropes, that's a five count. Both wrestlers are down on the canvas, that's a 10 count. Wrestlers tag in the corner, they have a five count to make that exchange. One man is down on the floor, depending on the style, that's either a 10 or a 20 count out on the floor. You have to be expert in the rules. And I'm saying this because there are two referees who are appearing on weekly TV every single week right now who do not seem to know a few of the counts we just articulated at the top of this section. There's exactly one area in which the referee must be more proficient than the wrestlers, and that is in knowledge of the rules. If we can't count on the referee to know and enforce the rules correctly, why even have a referee there 
at all. I might as well just watch a Jackie Chan movie. The spots are going to be more spectacular, and the parts that are supposed to be funny will actually be funny. This next one on my list is crucial, so listen carefully. You must become very skillful at your ability to mask communicating things like time cues or delivering a message from one wrestler to another in the ring. There are performers out there who don't have a good internal clock, and there's gonna come a time in a match where you're going to have to give them a time cue. You'll have to let them know you only have two minutes left, or there may come a moment in a match where you need to send a message from one wrestler to another so that the next spot can begin. And it's going to be up to you to mask that type of communication from the audience. When they detect it, it shatters the illusion of conflict. And once shattered, it is almost impossible to restore. So it might look as if you are checking to see if a submission hold is legal while you are actually delivering a time cue. It might appear as if you are admonishing one wrestler for pulling the hair of another when you were telling them to cut ahead to the finish. But when you're able to do these things seamlessly, you are helping to make the match great. Is there a ref out there you think consistently makes matches great? Well, go ahead and put them over down below in the comments right now. And let's show some love to the referees out there doing their jobs well. This next one is the difference maker between a referee who helps make a match great and a referee who detracts from the match. You've got to respect the ebb and flow of giving and taking focus in a pro wrestling performance. I'm of the opinion that referees are supporting players, and that means they only take focus for brief instances and no more. Like, for example, getting a stubborn wrestler to break when their opponent grabs the ropes, or confiscating a foreign object once it's been brought into the ring. In those instances, you do need to take focus. But there are other instances where you do not. For example, if one wrestler lands a particularly rough-looking chop on their opponent, I think it's okay for you as the referee to wince a bit. But I don't think you can sell the chop bigger than the wrestler who just took it. In that instance, you as the referee are taking focus away from where it belongs. Did you know that I have a playlist on my channel of all the videos I have made for non-wrestlers? Those are jobs like refereeing, being a manager, or an announcer, etc. It's appearing on screen right now. Click on that video and keep on learning. Or click on the orange square that's appearing on screen right now. It's going to take you to my Patreon, where you can start unlocking more than 750 exclusive posts all about professional wrestling.